Hey guys, welcome to another episode. As you can tell, we are not in the garage and we've got some friends with us. This is Mia and this is Bella. Yes, that's you. They're gonna be hanging out with us here, but we are jumping on our Subaru conversion wiring harness. Now, this is a completely trimmed down wiring harness from a 97 Legacy, which is the same uh, wiring harness that was used in the 98 Forester. Oh, very exciting, right? So we actually were able to trim this down. This came as a factory original harness with all the wires, all the connectors, all the sensors, all those great things. Yeah, check it out. And uh, we were actually able to trim it all down. Now I didn't record it because it's very uh, boring, I think would be the number one thing. But I do have some pictures of what it looked like when I got it and I spread it out on this same towel here. And I'll show you guys those pictures really quick. So you can see that the harness is actually complete, pulled straight out of the car. We have our ECU connection, all the main relays, um, the, all these different connectors and things that we still kept just in case our OBD2, uh, engine connectors, MAF sensor, position sensor, all those things. So this is actually all trimmed down. We do have some wires that we need to identify that were left over that go to the ECU, but don't have a connector anymore. So I kept uh, all of these connectors and the little protective shields and all that stuff. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Very exciting. A few moments later. All right, so back to business. Uh, FedEx delivered some more parts, so that's great. We always love new parts when they get delivered. We kept all these connectors and the little loom pieces and all that stuff. We all kept that just in case. We also have, check it on out, what do you see? All the wire that we cut off. This is about, I want to say seven-ish pounds of wire. I mean, it's just huge amounts of wire, uh, different gauges and thickness and styles and color patterns and traces and all sorts of wonderful things. So we kept all that. Those water colors will be good for in the future other projects um, to have different wires for different things. So we're going to hold on to that as well. And we're going to let the dogs inspect it because they are super nosy and want to see what's going on. But I'm gonna bring you guys in and I'm gonna show you guys what connectors we kept. And I mean, you saw the bag full of connectors that we didn't keep. Uh, we're just gonna go through all the ones we kept and then we're going to start labeling these. We do have the printout of the ECU pinout. So we've got our list of all the pins, where they go and a picture to accommodate it. And we're gonna go through these and see which ones we need to keep or which ones we can clip a little bit shorter to save on some space. Um, I know some of these um, we don't need for our application, but we're gonna go one by one just in case. And I just loosely wired all these. So anyway, let me bring you guys in. We're gonna go through all these connectors one by one um, and show you what I kept and a whole lot that I didn't keep. So we've got it all spread out still. First thing obviously we kept was our ECU connector. This connects to our computer um, with all the pins. We kept all the ones that went back to the ECU but didn't have an actual connector on the other side, it was cut off. We kept that just in case. We of course kept our OBD2 uh, connector. We also kept, um, this is another kind of sensor that you can use for diagnostics. Um, I just kept this on here as well. You can't go wrong with more di diagnostic options. We also kept, this is our main relay, our fuel pump relay. And this is our uh, test connector. This is one side of it. Uh, this actually just grounds out and that's what uses our test connector here. So we kept these. We also have an extra relay, one of these round relays that's from the, the harness uh, that we can use for other, PR, other, other parts. It was originally for the blower motor, but we're going to save that for the fans, I think, the fan relay. So we come down this side, we we'll go through the grommet where the engine is, through the firewall. We've got our engine connectors, cam and crank position sensors, um, all the other connectors for the things on the engine harness. Uh, and these are our O2 sensors, this dark gray and what's supposed to be white, but turns out being like a lighter gray. We come back around. We also have our MAF sensor, um, our, which is going to be one of these here. We also have our igniter, which we kept. We've also got, these are like atmospheric pressure sensors. Those go towards the engine as well. 
and we have a couple loose wires we're gonna trace back and this is for our starter. So there's really not a whole lot left on this, um, but it's nice to trim it all down. It was a massive jumbled mess that you see in there. So we're able to cut off a lot of the useless stuff. But what we're gonna do now is go through the pins here that are left over. We're gonna go one by one, see where they end up on here. And then we will label them on their ends, cut short the ones we don't need and hold on to the other ones that we do maybe need to be grounded out um, to, for a signal or something like that. So it's much skinnier than we started with. It was a monster mess. It took me about three hours to trim it all down to all of what you see here. Um, much more manageable here. Cut off a lot of weight, which is nice. Weight is the enemy when we're working on a big old bus like we have now. So you could see that that was an actual huge cluster of a mess of cutting out wires and things like that and, and labeling everything and tracing it all back. But the good news is we're in the garage, so we're making progress. So I've got everything roughly hooked up. I'm gonna bring you guys in a little closer and show you our setup and then cross your fingers that this uh, hours and hours and hours of work is gonna be worth it. So let's take a look. So we've got everything laid out. It looks like a jumbled mess, but we're gonna go through it really quick. We've got our ECU harness here, hooked into our engine harness here at the back part of the engine. Comes down, we've got our igniter attached here. A couple loose sensors we don't have plugged in yet. Our vehicle speed sensor here. We've also got um, all of our relays here and everything. This is gonna be our ignition switch, our dummy, like as if the power is on to the ignition. We've also tied together our two power source wires here. Um, for the ECU to get power. And what we're gonna be using is my M12 battery pack, which is normally for my drill or my little mini impact, but it's 12 volts, which is great because it's super handy and rechargeable. We don't have to lug around a huge battery to test this. But what we've got is a test flight, which is gonna simulate a load. So we've got our two wires here, one for our fuel pump and one for our electrical cooling fan, which will go underneath the bus um, to cool that. And of course, our vehicle speed sensor will be able to test on some sort, uh, sort of surface. Um, if it works, we should see some light on the back of that um, as a signal that it's picking up. So what we're gonna be doing is running power from this. We've already got it grounded to the grounding point on the manifold. I'm gonna add power to the system. So now in theory, the computer should have power. Now what we're gonna do is, where did I set it? Our ignition switch, right here. So this is our ignition switch. We're gonna give this power. And when we touch this to power, we should see this light come on and off and hear the relay clicking um, because we have our test mode connectors attached here. So cross your fingers and keep an eye on that light. All right, that's a good sign. You can hear the relays clicking right here. That means that our fuel pump is working. So we turn off our ignition, pull away the power, disconnect this one and go to our cooling fan, if it'll work with us. There we go. And it should do the same thing with the cooling fan. I can hear it. Oh, there it goes. 
So the fan relay is a little different, but it does show that it does come on. Awesome. So the next thing we need to do is test our vehicle speed sensor. Now I can't really do that with my hands all tied up, but if I can wedge this ignition switch wire in. Okay, so if I pull this, all right, good. So when it gets, ever it gets close to a metal surface, that's a signal of our speed. So this will actually go attached to our, pull that off. This is actually gonna go attached to our transmission and as the bolts that hold on our CV axle go by, this will tell the computer how fast we're going. But this is a great, great sign. Everything is working just the way it should, um, which is a huge relief because we spent hours working on this and it's so glad to see it all come together and all work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect power here. And what I would like to do is hook up a proper electrical, maybe grab our jumper pack and a couple wires ready to go and see if we can get spark out of this thing. I've got a spark plug tester in line already to see if we get some spark on that. So that'd be a really good, huge step forward to seeing if this whole thing is gonna come together that much easier. Okay, so we've got our new setup put together. We scrapped away all of our dummy fuel pump, dummy fan, all that stuff to the side. We've got our jumper pack acting as our battery, hooked up to the positive post. We have a jumper wire to excite our starter. We've got the starter switch plugged in here. That's what this yellow and red is. We've also got power coming from the stud to our system here to power our computer. We also have our ignition switch plugged in um, to the this little jumble here, that's what you can see on top. That way the computer comes on when we apply power here. So in theory, with this hooked up, everything connected the way it is, the igniter is plugged in, plug wires are in, our ignition tester light is in. So if we spin this over, we should be seeing light right there. So let me get you guys in a stand, we'll get all this hooked together, and we can fire it up and see if we're getting spark. So what you guys are gonna to wanna to be looking for is this right here. This is our tester. You should see this flash um, if we have spark with everything set up as we have it. This definitely requires two hands. So we've got power to the system. I heard some relays go. So look for this. Cut the power. We have spark. That is huge, huge, huge. All this work is finally coming together. That's huge and exciting, and we are that much closer to getting this thing for a test run. I really want to run this outside of the car to make sure everything is good, but oh man, that's so, so exciting. All right, guys, so this is super exciting, and I think this is where we're gonna cut this episode, is I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, and I kind of want to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger to see how it goes, because I think the next step is going to be a test run off the in, off the car, just like how it is right now. I'm going to go get some radiator hoses for the radiator we have. We have a really nice big aluminum radiator that we're going to put with this thing. So we need to get hoses for that. Um, I also need um, to get gas. Um, I need to reach out to our friends um, at Vic Auto Sports. Even though they do Fiat stuff, they have applications that we can use here. So I want to reach out to them for a fuel pump and a fuel filter. It's the same kind that we use in our 124, um, but since it's EFI rated, it should work just fine with this one. So what we're going to do here is get our fuel pump and filter from them. Um, so we need to have that in stock and available to run this test. So we have to get ourselves stocked up on supplies to test this thing out. But we have made massive strides going from that massive pile to all those scraps that you saw to testing it outside of the engine and then finally applying it here and seeing spark and that's huge huge steps forward to getting this thing running because once it gets running we can attach the rest of the transmission because you know this is just the bell housing we'll get the transmission attached and we can actually put this thing in the bus and fire it up and see how it goes from there um that's a lot closer than it sounds and a lot closer than you think so Little by little, let's get there one step at a time. I really do appreciate you guys watching. This is huge strides in our project, and I'm really glad you guys are following along. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. It really helps us grow so we can continue to build things like this and work on cars like these. So thank you guys so much, and until next time, we'll see you.